Hey everybody, today is a very special day. Actually, the very special day was about a week ago or so because if you haven't been following my channel, which you, if you're watching this video, I'd assume you are, but uh, I hit 3,000 subscribers um, about a week ago, I think, a week and a half or so. Um, yeah, I was not expecting it to come up so quickly and I just wanted to thank everybody for uh, supporting me throughout all these years. And so, uh, because you guys have been so good to me, I'd like to take you all back on a trip down memory lane. And I'm going to show you guys every single smoke alarm. Well, let's see, quote unquote, every single smoke alarm in my collection. Because there are, I think, like one or two that are actually installed and in service right now. And I'm not showing like system detectors either because those are technically fire alarm devices. Um, also, I'm not sure if I forgot any. There might be some still hiding somewhere in my shop. Um, but this is, for the most part, my entire smoke alarm collection of, uh, that I've been collecting since, I want to say, around like 2011, 2012, when I first started. So, uh, let's start up here at the top left corner. We, I have them kind of organized by brand, but then as we get to the bottom, it gets a little bit more kind of willy-nilly and like more rarities, uh, like various ones. So, the top here I have the Honeywell section, because as you guys know, Honeywell is my very favorite manufacturer of smoke alarms, or at least my most, uh, they're the, the most sentimental alarms to me at least. And that's because this one right here on the, the top left is probably my favorite alarm in my entire collection. This is the Honeywell TC49A1195-2. This one came out of the upstairs hallway at my old house, and it had been installed, I think by the previous owner, very poorly. They stuck the line cord through the ceiling and plugged it in, in the attic. It's in rough condition but it's still one of my favorites. I hold it near and dear to my heart. I used to be terrified of it, but now I love it. And I think if, if it weren't for that alarm, I don't think I would have all these today and I wouldn't have such an interest in them. So this alarm was very, very helpful in me in discovering my addiction, so to speak, to smoke alarms. Moving on down the line, we have some more Honeywell models, the TC49A 1054. There are actually two of them. This one was new in the box. It's a contractor model that I got. Um, not the same one that I made a video of years ago, but it is similar. Um, it's got the same horn, and this one's the same. It's also a 1054, but this one I got used, along with another one that I actually sold on eBay a couple years ago. Um, then we have the Square Honeywell TC49A 1062. This is the older variation, which we found out that the Square or Rectangular models came out first. So that one's pretty cool. And then we've got the TC49A, um, let's see, this is the 1005, at aka Model 2, and this one has the Edwards horn. Uh, I used to have another one that had the Delta Alarm, I gave that away to another collector. This one here is the TC49D, which is the hardwired version of the CD200A, which I made in a, a I made a video of this one recently, so you probably saw that one, but then I got the CD200A right here, battery powered variant. Um, then I have the PIFCO model right here, which is a rebrand of the CD200A. This one, which came from the UK, as we all know. If you remember that one I unboxed last year. The TC89Bs here, which are the battery-powered version of the TC49As. I have the contractor model 1018 with the Edwards horn. The retail model 1000 with the Edwards horn. This one I got used, and it's kind of broken. It constantly goes off when the battery is on it, so it's kind of a, just a parts slash decoration alarm now, but that's also 1000 and that one has a Kobishi horn. So that's all my Honeywells. So now moving down, we're going to go to the first alert slash BRK section. So right here we have the first alert SA76 RS. I have two of them. They're the same exact variation. Kobishi horn, uh, traces for the test socket, but no socket on board. And then I have this other one here, which is in a little bit whiter. It's a little bit hasn't yellowed as much as that one. And then the slightly, I think this one actually is earlier? I actually don't know. The one with the smaller cover and the lone slot and the larger center. And then I've got right here the SA77RF, which is the one with the remote receiver. And then right here is this first alert uh, smoke alarm center that it connects to. Do you remember I made a video of that one not too long ago? And then its successor, the SA78RF, which is the SA80FC looking one that has the pulsating squealer horn, which I showed recently, which is very, very rare. 
And then the hardwired version of the SA76RS, the SA769AC, and then the BRK version, the 769ACI, or AC-I, and then we have the battery powered version of that one, the 77R, and then the deluxe double system model, the 3000 with the two test buttons and two sensors. And boy, I did not plan this through. I'm trying to go around everything here. We have the Sears gas alarm here. I didn't really know where to put this one, so I just have it up here. I haven't made a video of this one. It's made by a company called Crafter. I am planning on making a video of this one soon, though. And then I have two BRK1769 uh, ACIs, which, as we know, are the ones that kind of look like system detectors, but they are not. They are residential detectors. This was the one that came with that Rittenhouse uh, smoke guard, that missing the bracket. And then the successor to that one, the 1839 ACI, this is the one that came from my church, so this one's pretty sentimental to me as well. All right, so we have a brief intermission with some Sears units here. So first of all, this one here is probably the most, one of the rarest ones I have. This is the Sears 9-57071, the rebrand of the BRK SS74R. And if I can get the cover open, you've seen the inside of that one before. It takes the 10.7 volt battery. This is another cassette master alarm. Um, so yeah, this is one of my favorites, of course. And then we have the slightly later version, the 246.57045. This is the rebrand of the SA76RS with a test button. And then we have the rebrand of the Firenetics F900D, the 350.57045. This is the one I got from my friend in Ohio last year. And then the one with the heat sensor, the deluxe model, the 57046. Um, this is the one I got from my cousin's uh, in-law's parents, or his, my cousin's husband's parents house yes confusing there i have a slightly later one here this is the sears what's this one? 462.57471 this is a rebranded gateway scientific model and it's actually a rebrand of kind of this one right here although this one doesn't have an led this is the smoky stover model 4001 which i when i got that one it falsed continuously but now i fixed it and then right here this is one of First Alert's very first piezo alarms. This is the SA76RC, and this is the earlier one with the tiered button and the banana horn that you saw recently. I have the dome button one here with the smooth cover, which is uh, slightly earlier as well, but it's got the dome button and the later horn, and this was the one that doesn't work. And then we have this SA76RC, which is slightly later. It has a textured cover, but it also has the dome button. And this is the one I got from my good friend Nathaniel, who you all know. Um, this one here, the SA67 with the white button, it's the white button version of those. And then we have the SA80FC, which is the version that uses the cover from the 78RF. I also have this here, which is the empty husk of an SA80FC that I found in an estate sale. Unfortunately, the PCB is long gone. The Family Guard FG888C, yep, this is a rebranded SA67 with the white button as well. Then another Sears model here. This is the Nalcor rebrand model 462.57474, which we recently discovered. The Nalcor Gateway Scientific and um, what other, the other brand? And Probe Southwest Laboratories were all made by the same OEM. So this was made by the same OEM as that one and that one. And then we have another one from pretty recently, the First Alert GA400RF gas alarm which you saw, it has the red horn in there. Oops, this one's cover came off, but this is the SA79TA, the travel alarm in the brown walnut finish with the wood grain. I got this one back in like 2019, I think. Brand new in the box. Um, here is one that's slightly older. This is actually a Montgomery Wards. It's a rebranded SA76RS, as you can clearly see. Not the test socket. This one doesn't have a cover though. I got this one used at an open house. Um, but then here we have a, another Montgomery Ward that has the cover. This is a later one, the Piezo model, rebranded SA76RC, and it's 84-7. And then here we have the BRK79R, which is the predecessor, or successor, sorry, to the SA76RS, or 77R actually, the BRK model. And it has the Piezo horn as well. I got this one from J uh, JDL Productions. And then here is the BRK1200. This one is the 
version of the 79R with the escape light, but it's the same thing basically. And then the First Alert SA-130, which is the same exact thing, it's just labeled First Alert. It has this cover for some reason, so this is probably a little bit later. But then the one that we're most familiar with, the First Alert model, is this one, the SA-120. This was a little bit earlier, this one has that same red colored horn and the red label. And then we have the Sears rebrand, the 246.57313, this one also has the red label. And this one also has that rare early red rust colored horn. And then here we have, this one actually was new in the box, but I swapped the covers from uh, the one that I got that had the missing light lens and this one which has the dome button and the later style horn. So this one's kind of like a Franken alarm. Still pretty cool though. Um, and then this one is the first alert, the later escape light model, the SA150 LT with the light test feature. I made a video of that one a while ago. And then this is the first generation SA67D, the earlier one with that metal sensor with the larger slots, what we call the false alarm sensor. I got this one from an open house as well. And then this one, the SA67D uh, first generation as well with the white button. And this one has the later plastic sensor. I got this one from JDL Productions. The SA80FD, which is the uh, hinge cover compartment or counterpart to the SA80FC. It's the same exact design as you can see. And this one's labeled 83R. We have a couple of first alert SA67Ds. I think this one is labeled 83R. And so is this one. These two I both got at the, uh, I think I got these at that uh, estate sale, along with the uh, SA80FC husk. Um, this uh, first alert, SA301, uh, yeah, SA301B, I got this one from Eric Deeds with the dual sensor. Really cool. And then we have two more SA67Ds here, second generations. This one's actually labeled SA67D, and so is this one. One of these I got... Um, I can't remember where I got one of them, but one of them I know I got brand new in the box off of eBay. I think this one. When I was like 12 or so. No, it wasn't that one. No, it was this one. This is the one I got brand new in the box because it has the white LED, or clear LED. I don't know where I got this one from, uh, but yeah, I have it. <laughs> Alright, moving down to the Firenetics section. The first gen F900D. This is the one with the squealer horn. Oops, the battery clip kind of got caught in there. And then the second gen F900D uh, with the out horn output hole and the piezo horn. We have the, this is a 09, 09, 09 something. Whoa, sorry, dropped it. 0908. I get this one confused with the 0981 all the time. That is the 0908, the model with the escape light and the hush. I completely forgot to grab this one, actually. This is the 0981 that I just mentioned. This is the travel alarm with escape light. And the escape light on this one, I, th I think I have batteries in it, actually. Yep, it works. I don't have batteries in the detector, but it's basically the same thing as the second gen F900D. Um... And then the hardwired version of the F900D first gen, the uh, 1200, this is the one that came from my grandma's house, so this one is very childhood as well. I have the trim ring somewhere. Um, and then the 1255, which is what's, was its successor, and the uh, hardwired version of the second gen F900D. This one has the hush and the push to test, as well as a alarm indicator and a power indicator. I also have the trim ring for that one somewhere. The this is the 1225, yeah. Um, this is the uh, the successor to this one, I believe. And this one has no battery backup, but that one does have a battery backup. Um, so that's all the Firenetics ones. Now we have Fire X. So here is the Fire X FX 1014 they got from Kiara Williamson. And this one is the green label, tiered button. Pretty cool. I made a video of that one recently. Here's the FX1020. This one I've had for a while now. I made a video of this one a long time ago, but I got this one in that lot of three alarms, the GE, the Family Guard, and this one off of eBay. This is the FXW-1, and this one came from my church along with the 
1839 ACI, so this one's also pretty sentimental to me. The original uh, Fire, Fire X F FXB-1 with that old logo you can kind of see there. And this one's got the squealer horn as well, which is pretty rare. And, sorry, just getting a call for some reason. The FX-1218, the uh, successor to the FX-1020 with the battery backup and the PSO, and green LED. I didn't get a back, uh, bracket or wiring harness with this one because I got this one in an open house. Okay, now for rebrands, we have some Jameson Code 1 models. This one, this was the one I got used, I think, to have that sort of melted, but yeah, I got this one used at that yard sale. CD1 from like, I don't know, 82 or something like that. This was the one I got new in the box from Garrett. And this one's from like 83, I think. Um, this one's a travel alarm. And then I've got some family guards here. This one, this is the one I got in that big lot that I unboxed back in like 2017, 2018, I think. It's got the original battery still in it. I never took that out. Um, and then this is the one that I got with the FX-1020, the family guard that has a little bit of overspray. And then this one is not a family guard, but it looks like one. This is an m -Hart, uh model 035-615, got the squealer horn, and I made a video of this one too. This is a pretty cool one. Okay, now we're going to do some square models. Be there or be square. So let's do some Look at the GE section here. This is the 8201-001, the very first of the GE Home Sentry models. 12.6 volt, there we go, with the Edwards horn and the voltage uh, detective uh, battery flag mechanism. And then the hardwired version of that, the 8201, 8202-001, sorry also with the Edwards horn and that sensor with the holes. This one's got a broken cover clip. This is the uh, line cord version of that one, the 8203-001, which I made a video of recently. It's also got the Edwards horn and the same sensor. And then this is the very latest, the 8201-301, that I also recently made a video of. Um, this one's got the star buzzer. Man, I just cut myself trying to get the cover open, but yeah, that's that's what the inside looks like. Of course, you already knew that, probably, if you watched the video. We have the later versions here. So in terms of the later models, this is the earliest one, the 8201-401C with the brown or chocolate base, as some call it. Um, this is pretty rare. Uh, I think only like three other people own these. And then this one is the travel alarm, the home and away, as they called it, um, with the travel bracket and that deactivation jack. Uh, yeah, this one's pretty cool. I actually hang this one on my door in my room. Uh, and I actually did take this one with me uh, on vacation last year. This is a slightly later model. This one actually has a plastic sensor. I never made a video of this one, but I got this one at an open house. No, it wasn't an open house, it was a yard sale. Uh, two years ago, I think? Yeah, this one's slightly later. This one's labeled, um, not 8201-401C, it's SMK, sorry. No, it's 8201-401C slash M1, which is pretty weird. So yeah, very strange. And then the Black & Decker model, the SMK60 slash M3, I'm pretty sure that's what this one is, right? Yeah, M3. Slightly later with the button in the middle. So that's GE, made by EI Electronics and Black & Decker. Now we have Early Guard. This is the first, well, not the first, actually. One of the oldest. The EGD-4S, uh, with that Douglas Randall vibratory horn and the neon indicator. And this is non-interconnect. Uh, the egd 5S, which is the successor to the 4S, and this one came from my church as well. It's one of the most yellowed units I own, so it came along with the FXW-1 and the 1839 ACI. So these three are the church trio. They're pretty sentimental to me. Uh, and then this one, the battery-powered counterpart, the EGD-5B, which I made a video of as well. I, ca I really like this one. This one's a cool one. 
Uh, so now this one actually is the oldest one. This is the success or the predecessor to that one. This is the EGD one C, and this is a rebranded uh, Pyrotronics or sorry Cerberus Pyrotronics Pyro Alarm Guardian FRU FRU one L. Blanking on model numbers here. Um, it would have had a line cord, obviously, but it's been cut. So that one's a rebrand of the Cerberus Pyrotronics Pyro Alarm Guardian models, which this one is the Guardian FB1, the original FB1, with no test button, and it's very large. Uh, battery flag. Yeah, I got this one from Leah Woods. Really cool alarm, got it new in the box. This is the successor to that one. It is the FB1A. It's slightly smaller, and it has a test button. Um, this one I got off of eBay from a seller in Canada, so it has both English and French on the back, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, so then we have down here the Sunbeam Centurion 45-21. This one is a rebranded uh, Pyrotronics Guardian FRU, or sorry, FB1. It's the rebrand of the original FB1 that I just showed with the battery flag as well. And then the uh, Sunbeam Centurion 45-31, which has the test button, which this one is a rebrand also of the FRU, or sorry, FB1, I keep doing that. It's a rebrand of the original FB1, but it has the added test button. It's not a rebrand of the FB1A, which has a test button anyways. This one, the Norelco Smoky HB0933, sorry, what was this one? It's HB093A or something like that? HB0933A. I knew it was something different, but this is that one that has the weird coffin sensor and the Delta Alarm horn. So this one's pretty cool. It's older, but most of the later ones were rebrands of the F, the FB1 as well, like the Sunbeam here. Okay, so that's the Norelco Smoky. I would like to find the one without the test button. Um, and then we have the Entronic Vigilante model ES7. This is the successor to the Z700. And this one's the 9 volt battery powered version with the test button, which I showed in a video. These are not as rare as I thought they were in the original video. Several people own these now. Um, mine was just the first one that surfaced in a really long time. The successor to that, the ES3, which is a rebrand of the JSNA, right there. Uh, this is the little micro profile looking one. Uh, and that one is, of course, what that one is based off of, which I made a video of that one recently. Um, and then this one is the Smoke Guard 700A, which actually came from the same seller that I got that one from. I didn't even, didn't put these two next to each other on purpose, but that just so happened. <laughs> um, but this is the 700A, the original Smoke Guard model, uh, takes those really large batteries. Um, and then there's its hardwired counterpart next to it, the 770. I have the trim ring in there as well. Uh, and then these ones came after the 700A. This is the 800A. I have two of them. This one was new in the box. And that one I got at an estate sale, the same place I got those SA67Ds and the SADFC Husk and, you know. Um, the Teledyne Water Pick Model D1. I got this one from an open house as well. And this one's a rebrand of the 800A. The Smoke Guard 907B2 with the interconnect. This one, uh, I got this one from another fan collector actually, Jeremy Milligan, a while ago. And this one is the Rittenhouse Model S7809, I believe it was. Yeah, I think that's what it was. And then this one came from a viewer of my channel along with the uh, 1839, or sorry, 1769 ACI. I got those together. Um, this is a rebrand of the 907B2 as well, the interconnect. And then we have the two Gillette Captain Kelly models, the line cord powered 941 and the battery powered model 929, the 12.6 volt battery. I got these both off of eBay, actually that one was a birthday gift for my mom, so technically it came from my parents, but that one I bought myself. And then I have the Edwards model 217P, sorry, it's just the plug-in model, but uh, it's the plug-in version of the 217, and I got this one recently as well. It's a cute little alarm. I like it. And then here we have something. I got this one for Christmas this year. It's the Travel Safe travel alarm made by ESL. Um, really cool. I made a video of that one as well. It's a cool little alarm. It came with a, it came with a flashlight, kind of like the Lifesaver one. 
Now we have the new tone section here. So here's the oldest new tone I have. Well, once again, technically not, but it's the oldest one that I know is new tone. This is the S-180L. It's from 1977. It's a rebranded ESL 709-2. I don't know why I sounded British there, but anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, a couple other collectors have these. These are cool. Um, and then this one is the new tone S191, which I got recently as well. And this one, unfortunately, the sensor doesn't work, so I have to, like, jerry-rig it to go off with the sensitivity adjustment. It's stupid. And then here, it's upside down, is the new tone S185, which is the battery-powered version of the S191. Um, the S191, by the way, is a rebranded ESL 906-2. Um, this one is the battery-powered version, and there's an ESL model of this as well that we don't know the model number of. Um, this one, this, like I said, that's not the oldest new tone I have. This one, we don't know what this is. This is either a new tone relabeled Gentex, maybe an old ESL. I have no idea. It's labeled new tone right there. Uh, but yeah, nobody knows what this thing is. So this is an unknown for all intents and purposes. All intents and purposes. We have some oldies over here. This is the Pyrotector Smoke Sentinel Model S255. And yes, I know that the badge is bent up. That happened while I was getting it out of the box that it was stored in. I'm going to fix that. Uh, this is the oldest, one of the oldest I own. It has the vacuum tube inside. Um, way, way cool alarm. I made a video of this one. I recommend you check that video out. This is a cool, really cool alarm. And then this one is a rebrand of that one, actually. This is the Master Guard MG300, the original Master Guard model, with that heavy wood kit, wood cover, um, the two indicators on front, the alarm and the power, and it's got the same innards as that one, basically. And then here we have a bit of a later Smoke Sentinel model. This one's actually rebranded by Thermodynamics. It's actually just called Dynamics on the box, but its really real name is Thermodynamics. Um, Pyro Sentinel Smoke Detector Model 104. This is a rebranded Smoke Sentinel Model 30-04. Um, and then here we have another rebranded Pyrotector. It's actually a rebrand of that one. This is a Vulcan Autosonic Mark S04. I got this one from Garrett a while ago. This one's cool. It's designed to go with their bells, so the, the cover does make a, a gong sound. It's really cool. Um, and then we have the latest, uh, not the latest actually, this is the latest plug-in version I own of the Smoke Sentinel. This is the rebrand, rebranded M-Heart one. It's a rebrand of the Smoke Sentinel 30-53, I believe, which was the line cord variant. Um, yeah, way cool. This one's really cool. And then this is, this one I think is actually later than that one. This one is the Smoke Sentinel, Pyrotector Smoke Sentinel 30-77 which uh, may or may not be rebranded by Heath Kit, I actually don't know. Um, but it has the star buzzer, so it's pretty cool. This one falses, though, sometimes, so I rarely put ba a battery in this one. It just scares me. <laughs> um, so now I have some rarities over here. This one, you may remember the Can-Am Fire Angel model, uh, what was this, FA-1? Yeah, FA-1. This one's a weird one as well. Got that little... PCB with basically nothing on it. The sensor, really weird looking sensor and the Kobishi horn. Yeah, this is a weird one. And then myself, um, Nathaniel, and JDL Productions also have one of these. This one is one that nobody else has, and this is probably one of the most rare ones that I own, actually. This is the Dong Bang Electronic Industrial Company, I think it's what is what the company's name is. Uh, model DB... What's it? DB-SSA-77A? Yep. And this is that one that was made, it was actually uh, imported from Korea and they were sold here illegally in California back in the 70s for like a couple months or so. This one somehow slipped through the cracks and ended up on the other side of the country. How that happened, I have no idea, but I am very happy to, to have it here in my collection. And then here's another cool one, the KF Industries Save-A-Life model. 525. I made a video of that one also. It has a heat sensor and a gas sensor in it. So that's all my vintage, well, vintage alarms, older alarms. I do have some other ones down here that are slightly newer, but some of them are pretty old. So I'll start over here. This here, you may remember, remember from my original collection video. 
This is a bracket for a FireX uh, dual sensor alarm from the 90s that came from my laundry room at my old house. The alarm broke back in like the early 2000s and uh, now it's in, the bracket is in my collection. We kept the bracket on the ceiling all those years for some reason. So yeah, I still have this. The Kitta Nighthawk model KNCOSMB. This is one of the first ones ever made from 1999. Yes, the label has gotten a little, a little yellow with age. It still works. Last time I tested it, I think. Um, yeah, this is a very this is very childhood. This alarm. Um, and then this one, the Code One Model A. I got this one also in that big lot of like ten or so alarms. I didn't get a bracket with this one, but this one does work. I have tested it. And then this one, I believe, is a some newer FireX. I'm never going to remember the model number. I think this is like an FADC or something like that. I think I got this one from a Fire Alarm 9200 on YouTube. Once. All right, there we go. Yep, this is an FADC 120-1182C, 4618. Yeah, these are pretty common, but some people like these. Um, and then this one is an I-12060. This one also came in that big lot that I got this one from, along with the others. Uh, this is a first start PC900V. This one actually came out of my grandma's house. Um, I installed this one back in like 2012 or something like that. And then just last year, it finally gave its end of life signal. So this one is no longer good anymore. It's now in my collection. It has served us very well over the last 10 years. Um, this one I got from the yard sale along with that Jameson right there. This is a BRK uh, 4120B, but it's a 1999 model, so it's pretty old, and it's got the lenses on the, the button and the space there. So that's pretty cool. This Fire X, this is a... one twenty one zero seven two b So this is a little bit older as well. I don't think I've ever tested this one though. I got that one from, I think I also got this one from Fire Alarm 9200. This is a micro profile from 2002. I got this one new in the box at like a Goodwill or something for no reason. I just, it was like three, three bucks and I was like, sure, I'll get it. Why not? It doesn't do um, the Pulse 46. It does code three, unfortunately, which I was expecting. And then this first alert carbon monoxide detector, I think I got this one in the lot along with the SA-77RF and the smoke alarm center and everything. I did test this one once, and it does work. I might do a video of this one, maybe a short, if enough people request it. Um, but this one's pretty interesting. It doesn't do the code 4-4. It does like a weird, like, continuous. It's cool. And then last but not least, actually, no, not last but not least, we have this first alert uh, 9120B. It's first alert labeled. It's from 2020, but it has the old First Alert logo. This was before they upgraded or changed the logo. I got this one from a ReStore a couple months ago. And now, these are a bunch of older, not older, well, they are kind of older. They're all from like around 2004 or so. These came from my friend in Ohio's house. There are two, sorry, there's one BRK 9120B, one First Alert 9120B, a very yellowed, 4120B and a carbon monoxide detector, CO, CO5120BN. Interesting. And I got the brackets and everything with them. So he just gave me them because he was replacing them. And I was like, sure, I'll take them. I have nothing better to do with them. So um, I think that concludes everything that I wanted to go over. I know this was a very long video, but uh, I feel like for the 3K subscriber special, Nothing could be too long, honestly. Um, so thank you guys so much once again for supporting me and for supporting my channel over the last four, 10 or so years. Actually, it's been 12 years, I think, um, that my channel recently turned 12. Um, but yeah, I am going to have fun cleaning these all up. So I will see you guys in the next video. Let's make it to 4K soon. So thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye.